apes and apets welcome back to the channel we have an exclusive interview with gary gensler on bloomberg to share with you guys gary gensler goes over potentially banning payment for order flow the transparency rules that are to come for the hedge funds in the near-term future as well as cracking down on gamification on robin hood as well as talking about the fact that robin hood disabled the buy button and how that plays into potentially banning payment for order flow so do me a quick favor before we dive into it hit that like button for me comment down below for the youtube algorithm to push this out to as many retail investors as possible i think they will get a lot of value out of this video and also subscribe to the channel if you guys want to stay up to date with amc or any other stock option and or crypto that will make you guys a ton of money that is the ultimate goal to make you guys money so we're gonna dive into it i'm not going to be here at the end of this video so until next time you guys take care uh, you've talked a lot about things you'd like to get done but there are quite a few things that we haven't seen yet let's start with crypto because everyone loves to talk about crypto you said you think a lot of these tokens really are securities are you seeing evidence actually there are things being done in this market that would be violations of the securities laws if the securities laws apply well, David, I thank you for inviting me here. And you're right, we do have a broad agenda and crypto is part of that agenda. Uh, but it's an agenda really to make the capital work. It's markets work better for the investing public and for the companies on the other side to drive more efficiency in these markets. As to your question about crypto, um, the agency is really just looking out for investors and many of these tokens not trying to prejudge anyone, but many of these tokens have the attributes of securities. They're raising money from the public and the public is anticipating profits based upon the efforts of others. And so uh, we've brought a number of actions. We're trying to work with the various crypto platforms, the exchanges, the lending platforms to come in, get registered, find where we can uh, to adjust our rule set to get the investor protection for the public. As you say, you've encouraged the exchanges to come in and get registered. Uh, at the same time, a lot of them have not, as far as I can tell. Yeah, At uh, what yep, point do you have to force that. it? <laughs> well, no, it's because, look, if you're, if you're a platform and you have 75 or 100 or sometimes 5,000 tokens on that platform, probabilities are that a number of them and maybe many of them are what's called a security. And, and it's Congress painted with a broad brush and it comes down to this. Are you raising money from the public and the public's anticipating profits based on the efforts of others? Uh, and uh, my predecessor, Chair Clayton, uh, the agency that I'm honored to uh, chair at this point in time uh, is going to try to pursue investor protection. And if that means bringing greater enforcement actions, we'll do that. But it would be better to have these platforms come in, work with us and come under the securities laws. Do you think you've done everything you can under the statutes as they exist now? Do you need legislation in order to really go after and really get registration from those exchanges? I think that the um, I think that the laws are pretty clear as laid out in the 1930s, uh, and we have an ability to work with these exchanges using various authorities to, to uh, basically tailor some of these because these crypto exchanges and lending platforms uh, have operated differently than the traditional New York Stock Exchange. Um, but would it be helpful to work with Congress on some things? I've, I've said this in the past around some details around transfer agents and others. Yes. Uh, but it, it, unless uh, Congress says otherwise, we have to ensure there's investor protection in this space. And we're going to work with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, where there are some that are commodity tokens, because while many of these are securities, some um, may be under their remit. And we work together as two federal agencies. Let me turn, Gary, if I could, to a second item on the agenda in no particular order here. And that is payment for order flow, something that you've come out against. Last uh, August, you said you were considering actually banning it altogether. Where does that regulation stand? And at this point, do you still think that's possible to ban it altogether? Or is it more likely we'll have full disclosure? Well, again, what we're trying to do within our uh, remit is help investors get a better deal on one side and companies raising money 
on the other side, a better deal and drive greater transparency and efficiency in the middle of the market. So in the equity markets right now, if you place a market order, a retail market order, 90, 95% do not go to the lit exchanges, do not go to NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, they go to wholesalers. And they don't have order by order competition. And part of that is because of what you just said, payment for order flow, which is, yes, it's banned in, in the UK and in Canada and Australia. The European Union, through something called ESMA, is looking at that right now. And so I think it's natural that we look to say, how do we drive greater competition and efficiency of this market? and use the tools that Congress have given us. But are you keeping open the possibility, the option at least, of banning it altogether? And if so, when will you make a decision whether you'll do that or not? Well, it would be a decision for the five-member commission. We would put it out to notice and comment so the public gets to weigh in. We benefit from the public's view, from the investor side, from the issuer side, to basically a lot of our market right now is dark. It's not in the lit markets, David. It's dark and going to wholesalers and how we get more transparency and competition in the market. So each feature is on the table, whether it's something called the minimum increment or tick size or the national best best bid, best offer, and how the order routing works. And yes, that includes not just payment for order flow, but possibly what's called exchange rebates. So it all fits together. And we haven't served up a recommendation to the commission yet. And the commission, if they supported it, would put it out to public comment. Do you have an estimate or a guess of when you might serve it up to the commission? David, I learned long ago not to sort of do that. It, <laughs> I, I, I have occasionally, yeah. and it, 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 it's about trying to get the economics yeah. and the law and the policy right, yeah. get it in front of a commission, if yeah. so, get it out to the public. So I understand the question, but I'll beg off. For yeah, I, I learned long ago to expect that answer, but nonetheless, to ask the question, you never no, no, know. You're doing your job. You I'm trying to do answer, my job. Make an answer. Uh, a lot of us really focused a lot on the payment for overflow when we had the Robin Hood situation with those meme stocks, which I think we just passed the one year anniversary of. At the time, I know this commission was looking into the possibility that there was some wrongdoing. Have you drawn a conclusion? The fact that we haven't seen enforcement action, does that suggest that maybe there wasn't any wrongdoing? Well, again, uh, for the public, uh, in the job I'm in, I'm also a chair of a commission and sometimes uh, has to vote on these various enforcement actions. So I can't get into any one matter or prejudge anything. But there was four matters of policy, not enforcement, but policy that we noted and the staff did a staff report. And one of them we're going to take up next week, actually, in an open commission meeting is about the plumbing of the stock market, what's called clearing and settling, and how we can take some risk out of the system. And also last year, uh, the retail public found that they were foreclosed from trading, that, that a number of brokerage apps said, nope, it, it was a fateful Friday, and they said you couldn't buy any more of this stock or that stock. So we're trying to address the plumbing and put a proposal out next week. We'll also, I think, hopefully uh, be taking up what's called digital engagement practices, what some people call gamification and, and what to do there. And and as you and I have been talking about the actual market structure itself. So there's three or four projects that we have here. And next week, we're going to put our first proposal, hopefully, in front of the public, uh, subject to my commission's approvals. A, a third item on the agenda you laid out has to do with climate and disclosure with respect to climate. My understanding is with Bloomberg reporting on this that now we are having the SEC ask for more detail, for at least from, from subsidiaries, on registration statements. But what about the move to possibly requiring disclosure in 10Ks? Where does that stand? Well, again, we're living in a changing time of uh, where investors more and more want the information of the climate risk of the companies in which they invest. And the issuers, the companies, actually could benefit from greater standards, consistent, comparable, decision-useful standards. So we're working on some uh, uh, staff work, serve up again to a commission about climate risk disclosure. Hundreds of companies are doing it. Uh, trillions of dollars of assets under management uh, are reviewing this information now. I think the SEC has a historic role to play to bring consistency and comparability to this, uh, this disclosures that are already happening voluntarily. I think uh, we can weigh in and 
and and sort some things out um, in this field. Well, let me ask about that specifically. Uh, apart from affirmative requirements of disclosure, we have so-called greenwashing, with some people voluntarily disclosing things may not be fully accurate. Uh, are you devoting uh, possible enforcement resources to taking a hard look at what people are volunteering? Well, again, I'm going to beg off on enforcement, but if I could stay on policy for a moment, we are looking at this uh, very carefully. As you say, some people are promoting, hey, invest with us, come hither. Uh, we're carbon neutral or we're green or we're this or that. And this is usually fund managers, but we are looking to put out uh, some proposals uh with regard to what you're calling greenwashing so that the funds uh, have, there's something that stands behind a name. You walk into a grocery store and it says fat-free milk, what stands behind that? You have a, a label on the side. Well, what stands behind a fund that says they're ESG or carbon neutral? And it's kind of about truth in marketing. So, Gary, finally, uh, when you came in, as I say, there was a long list of issues. We haven't even gotten to all of those issues. There was a lot of expectations in Wall Street. A lot of things would be coming fairly soon. It may have been Wall Street's fault. We may have been over-anticipating. But now that you're into this job, give us a sense. And you don't have to promise. I won't hold you to it. There's no, you, 10, no 10B5 disclosure here that I'm aware of. But what would you hope to get done this year in calendar 2022? So, look, I, I look at it more broadly. We have an opportunity to make markets fair to the American public, to working families, to early investors, to retirees. And we also have a chance to lower the cost of capital to the companies raising money. So we've got uh, it's all public. We have nearly 50 of these projects and uh, we sequence them when they're ready, when the staff has good thoughts, the economics, the law sorted out and a commission weighs in. We have a little bit of compromise amongst our commissioners and we put it out to comment. But I would hope this year, 2022, that we would put out many of these proposals. Hopefully we'll even start to turn to finalizing some of them because we started the proposal phase last fall and we'd start to finalize. And of course, this is a multi-year project. We don't wanna rush things. We wanna get it right, but we also wanna get it out to the public and get the feedback market efficiency, new technologies, greater transparency and competition, and the disclosure space that you talked about, not to mention crypto on top of it all.